Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff calls Edward White. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. White. Good afternoon, Counselor. Uh, will you state your name, full name for the record? Yes, Edward White. Where do you reside? Los Angeles, California. How are you employed? Uh, many years ago, I founded uh, Edward White & Company, Certified Public Accountants, and I am the managing and senior partner of the firm. What is a certified public accounting firm? A certified public accounting firm is authorized by a particular state, in my case, California, to audit financial information and to certify the statements related thereto. What's the nature of the work that's done at Edward White & Company? It's diversified. It includes providing uh, tax and related compliance services, that is to do the tax returns for the clients. Uh, that's both fiduciary, corporate, individual, as well as partnership work. We also are involved in providing uh, financial statements for financial institutions and for governmental agencies. Uh, we, in addition to that, have a business management department and provide a wide variety of services in that capacity. Are you the Edward White of Edward White & Company? Yes, I am. Who do you employ? We employ a very talented group of professionals that have really amazing credentials. They have graduate degrees from NYU and USC in business administration as well as taxation. Uh, many of my colleagues have been with the firm for over 25 years in one case for 35 years. I'm very proud to be associated with this group of people. Who are your principal clients? We represent approximately 100 high net worth individuals and the companies that they own and operate. In addition to that, we do work for governmental agencies such as the Department of Justice, the State of Alaska, the State of California, and the City of Long Beach. What's your educational background? I started my college career uh, utilizing the GI Bill. I served four years in the Air Force and was fortunate enough to have that opportunity. Um, my undergraduate degree was in business administration and I have a master's degree in business administration from the University of Southern California. After completing my graduate degree at USC, I studied uh, several, I took several tax classes, corporate, fiduciary, estate and gift, and uh, subject matters such as that. Do you have any other experience with education? Yes, I was a former professor of accounting and taxation at California State University located in Los Angeles, California. What kind of work do you personally do? The work I do is primarily transaction oriented. Um, acquisitions of companies, dispositions, that is buying or selling a company, arranging financing with uh, large financial institutions, uh, consulting with clients where they feel it's appropriate for me to be involved, uh, assisting my colleagues. As I mentioned to you, we have approximately 100 high net worth individual clients, and there's always something that, that um, I can contribute to. Do you hold any certifications? Yes, I'm certified in financial forensics by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. I'm also um, a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the California Society of Certified Public Accountants. And of course, I'm a certified public accountant. What are financial forensics? That's an attempt to ascertain not only the facts, but what transpired uh, as it relates to financial activity. So you do a study based upon financial records. You then look at contracts. You look at other financial information in an attempt to, uh, once again, not only ascertain what the results were, but what caused the results. 
Have you ever previously testified in court? Yes, I've been accepted as an expert witness in both the California court and the federal courts, and I have testified um, in matters involving the Department of Justice and the FBI. Okay. Do you serve on any boards, or have you served on any boards? Objection <laughs> relevance, Your Honor. This witness is not being proffered as an expert in this case. All right. Wasn't designated. This is just a fact witness and not an expert witness? Fact witness and it uh, goes to credibility. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. I think we can move on now. Okay. Do you know Mr. Depp? Yes, I do. How did you come to know Mr. Depp? Uh, I met him because he was introduced to me by a senior executive at the Bank of California, Richard Smith. Do you work with Mr. Depp? Yes, I do. In what capacity? We are his business management firm. How long have you served in that capacity? By approximately six years. What does that role involve? Processing, managing his financial affairs. Um, as you know, Mr. Depp is an amazing talent, internationally acclaimed for his work, but he relegated his financial activities to me and my colleagues, so we provide a wide variety of services for him. Do you do this kind of work for other people? Yes, we do. Numerous other clients. When did you first become involved with Mr. Depp? Approximately six years ago, uh, after the introduction from Mr. Smith. What was the nature of the work that you were to, that you were to perform for him? Initially, it was to perform a forensic study, evaluate his financial affairs, and to formulate recommendations on how he could manage his affairs in a more advantageous manner. After you conducted that analysis, what did you do? Uh, I met with Mr. Depp, the purpose of which was to share with him uh, the results of our findings and to make recommendations on how he could resolve the issues he was confronting. When was that meeting? That meeting was on April 21st, 2016. Who called the meeting? I did. I called the meeting because I felt it was appropriate to meet with Mr. Depp and to uh, discuss his affairs and to provide him with uh, opportunities and plans and strategies to resolve the issues he was confronting. Where was the meeting held? It was held at his offices in Los Angeles, California. Do you know approximately what time it began? It began at approximately 7.30, and my recollection is there were seven people in attendance, right. including Mr. Depp and myself. Was alcohol served at the meeting? Not to my recollection. I don't recall any alcohol being consumed. Did Mr. Depp stay for the entirety of the meeting? Oh, yes. He was very interested in the contents. He asked very thoughtful questions. Um, he was fully engaged and fully sensitive to the matters that we were discussing. Uh, did, did there come a time when Mr. S uh, Mr. Depp didn't participate in the meeting? No, he was very actively involved. He did excuse himself on two or three occasions. It was my understanding that he was going to contact uh, Ms. Hurd and attempt to respond to her concerns and also address the fact that this was an extremely important meeting and that it involved his financial viability and that he felt it imperative to stay and address the issues I was discussing with him. When did the meeting conclude? At approximately 9.30. So it went for approximately two hours. At the conclusion of the meeting, what did you deserve, what did you observe as to Mr. Depp? Uh, that he was fully engaged once again. He thanked me profusely for not only addressing the problems, but he was excited about the fact there was a strategy and plan to resolve the problems. Did he appear impaired to you in any way? No, to the Actually, contrary, uh, I found him had, to be. I'm sorry, sir, there was an objection. All right, what was the objection? I'm sorry. Leading. Leading? Asked him for his observation well, as an uh, impairment. Well, if you want to ask different, I'll sustain that objection, but you can ask another question. Did you make any observations as to Mr. Uh, Depp's potential impairment? It was readily apparent to me that he was actively involved in the conversation. He asked very thoughtful and prudent questions. 
he was genuinely interested, and once again, when he left, he thanked me profusely for not only addressing the issues, but formulating a strategy and plan to resolve them in a successful manner. Did you have, did you play any role on Mr. Depp's behalf with respect to the dissolution of his marriage to Ms. Heard? Yes, I was actively involved in the negotiations of the uh, separation and the marriage dissolve. What role did you play in those negotiations? Well, in my capacity as his business manager, I understood his financial capacity and the tax implications associated with it. So I was actively involved in uh, addressing uh, those issues as they were forthcoming from counsel. Uh, you mentioned tax implications. What are you talking about there? Excuse me? I think you just mentioned tax implications. What are you talking about there? Well, what I was talking about is that when Ms. Heard began the negotiations, she was asking for approximately $4 million. That Objection balance then was increased. Hearsay. Black Foundation hearsay. These are requests made by Ms. Heard and her counsel in a, in a conversation, in communications. Here, you, you want to approach for oh, a minute? Okay. Certainly. As a result of your uh, involvement on behalf of Mr. Depp in the negotiation, what was your understanding of what Ms. Hurd was looking for? She initially was looking for a consideration of $4 million, but her demand continually increased. It went from $4 million to $5 million. Then it went from $5 million to $5.5 million. Then it went to $7 million. And then it was $7 million, and she required, demanded that Mr. Depp also pay $500,000 to her attorneys. Then, after that consideration, she also said that all the community liabilities that were accumulated objection, during the Your course Honor. of the we marriage, which approximated it, 13 million. Sorry, there's an objection, million. sir. Whatever there's an objection, I'm sorry. If you can't hear it, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay? Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem, this sir. This just goes into his allegations of what she said, which Your Honor just instructed me. Uh, sustain the objection on that. He has no foundation to suggest that. No knowledge of that. Your, Your Honor, I, I, I understand that. I, I asked his understanding. All right, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. May I continue? She'll tell you yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> he learns very well. <laughs> um, so the next demand was that all of the community liabilities that were unresolved approximately $13.5 million, that Mr. Depp had to pay those liabilities in its entirety. So at that point, she was demanding $14,250,000 of consideration, and then it got worse. The next demand was that all of this consideration be paid to her free of taxation. And, Counselor, for him to pay $14 million $14,250,000 to Ms. Heard. That would require him to earn approximately Objection, $30 Honor, million. Dollars. So far beyond the scope, so far beyond his foundation of what was discussed. All right, I'll sustain that last, last answer. All right. Next question. Did you make a proposal as to how payments would be made to Ms. Heard? Yes, I did. And they were initially contemplated to be paid directly to the charities, the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, for the benefit of the children who required severe medical service and to the ACLU. During the course of the negotiations, one of the demands, because the contract changed, 
was that the payments be made directly to Ms. Heard. Did you have any personal uh, involvement with either the ACLU or the Children's Hospital? Yes, I did. What was that? Uh, Mr. Depp directed me to issue two $100,000 checks directly to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. I knew that he was involved and supported their efforts and appreciated his service. In addition to that, he directed me to contribute $100,000 to ACLU. In accordance with his instructions, my colleagues drafted the checks, I executed them, and they were delivered to the two charities. Did you continue making payments to either of those charities on Ms. Hurd's behalf? No, in fact, I was chastised for making the payments by Ms. Hurd's counsel and told that the payments in the future uh, had objection, to go directly to her. Is, this is clear hearsay. He's not I, answering the question. I would, I, I would ask for you to instruct him to answer the question no. and not expound upon his. I'll sustain as to hearsay. Thing. Next question. No. What role did you play with respect to the payments ultimately made to Ms. Hurd? Um, we supplied the payments to Ms. Hurd in accordance with the agreement either on or before the date in which they were required to be paid. The first payments made to Ms. Heard was $2 million in 2017. Then in April of 2017, another payment of $1 million made payable directly to Ms. Heard was made. Then in August of 2017, another million dollars was paid directly to Ms. Heard. Uh, then in November, $500,000 was paid directly to Ms. Heard. My colleagues drafted those checks, I executed them, they were delivered on a timely basis. Therefore, in 2017, she was paid $4.5 million, directly paid to her. Then on February 1 of 2018, she was paid the final installment of $2.3 million for total payments that went directly to Ms. Heard of $6.8 million. Do you know when this lawsuit was filed? Yes, it was filed in March 1, 2019. Thank you. Were the payments that were made on Mr. Depp's behalf uh, directly to Ms. Heard the only economic benefit she received? Objection leading. I haven't heard the go. I, I, I'll overrule the objection for this now. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, were, were, were the payments made on. Uh, to Ms. Heard, the only economic benefits that she received from the settlement agreement? No. As I shared with you earlier, Mr. Depp was required to pay $500,000 to Ms. Heard's counsel, which he did in a timely and respectful manner. He was also required to pay all the community liabilities, uh, which accumulated during their 15 month of marriage, uh, was approximately um, $13,500,000. So he paid all the community liabilities. She paid none of them. That's why you have to aggregate the money that was paid directly to her, the money that was paid to her, to the charities on her behalf, the money that was paid to her attorneys, and the relief of all these liabilities that she had, that he had to satisfy. That's why I said to you, Counselor, that the total consideration paid to her was $14,250,000, and she demanded that that payment be made free of taxation, that Mr. Depp would have to satisfy all the tax liabilities. How long were they married for? They were married for 15 months. Okay. Um, were the payments that went to Ms. Heard the only uh, payments that you've made on Mr. Depp's behalf? No. We satisfied all of his obligations, so it was very customary for us to pay everything that Mr. Depp was obligated to pay. Are you familiar with an entity known as 2020 Wine Merchants? Yes, I am. What you, why are you familiar with it? It's a prominent purveyor of wine in Los Angeles, California. Objection, Your Foundation, hearsay. I don't see the hearsay, but I, I don't Foundation know. at this point. Can we appreciate uh, sure, your approach? Sure, sure.
think where we left off is I asked you how were you familiar with 2020 wine merchants? And if that's not what I asked you, that's what I'm asking you now. 2020 is a uh, highly recognized purveyor of wine in Los Angeles, along with other companies. What, what involvement, if any, did you have with 2020? Um, I satisfied the liabilities that Mr. Depp incurred, which at the dissolve of their marriage was approximately $160,000. Uh, do you continue to pay Mr. Depp's wine bill? Uh, yes, I do. We pay all of his obligations, but his wine bill has, has shrunk to virtually zero um, because of he does not consume that much in the way of wine. He's made a few gifts around Christmas time, but his wine bill has gone to virtually zero. Are you familiar with a Spanish wine known as Vega Sicilia? Yes. How are you familiar with that? I know that it is a very expensive wine, and that I know that Miss Hurd enjoyed drinking the wine. How much does it cost? The cost of the wine is approximately $500 a bottle. Were you ultimately uh, charged with uh, paying for the wine that was served on uh, at the birthday party on April 21, 2016? Yes, I was. We rendered the payment for that balance. Excuse me. Oh. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Sorry. How many bottles of Vega uh, Sicilia were served? At Ms. Hurd's request, uh, she ordered five bottles of the wine and eight bottles of other wine, so a total of 13 bottles of wine. Thank you, Mr. White. I have no other questions at right, this, cross, this, this time. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. White. Good afternoon, Counselor. Your firm has been paid millions of dollars by Mr. Depp and his companies since you were first retained in 2016, correct? Correct. And in fact, you're being paid for the time that you're sitting on that witness stand today, aren't you? No. Well, you've char you charged the time that you spent um, in connection with legal proceedings in this case, correct? That's correct, but I charge for my time. Yeah. It, and I, it's the right. same time. You, you answer my question. Charge... In fact, you charge $710 an hour for your time, don't you? Counsel, if you'll let me complete my answer, I'll no, be happy I, I, to respond. Sir, please just please try to stick to the question that I'm asking you. You've had you've had your chance to go well beyond the question being asked, but if you could just please stick to the question I'm asking you, it would go a lot faster. No, could you, I don't think your microphone was on there. Well, it's not it's not really badgering. It's not a no, thank you, Your Honor. But that's that's all right, sir. Just if you could answer the question that's asked, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, right. Your Honor. I, I said, let me let me start over, sir. You're, you, you charge Mr. Depp $710 an hour for the work that you do for him, don't you? That is my standard rate for all clients, and yes, I do charge that rate to Mr. Depp. And you gave a deposition in this case. You remember that on or around February 2nd, 2022? Yes. And that day, you charged Mr. Depp $710 an hour for the time that you spent giving testimony that day, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you charge Mr. Depp $710 an hour for anything that you do in connection with his account, don't you? Yes, I do. You have about six people working on Mr. Depp's account, correct? Yes. And whether through you or one of your colleagues, your main contact with Mr. Depp and his companies is his sister, Christy Dembrowski, correct? No. Who is your main contact? Mr. Depp. One of your colleagues maintains active communication with Christy Dombrowski, correct? Could you ask a question again, Counselor? One of your colleagues maintains active communication with Christy Dombrowski, correct? No. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. 
Mr. White, I've handed you the transcript from your deposition that you gave in this case on February 2nd, 2022. You remember that? We did it over Zoom? Yes, I do. Okay. And you, you swore to tell the truth in that deposition as best you can, correct? Yes. Okay. Can you turn to page 116 of your deposition transcript? Certainly. Did you say 16, Counselor? 116. 116. Okay, I have it. And now you just answered no to my question about your colleagues maintaining communication with Christy Dombrowski, but at your deposition just two months ago, on line 11 of page 116, the question is, what about Christy Dombrowski? The answer that you gave is, I do not, I haven't spoken to Christy in some time. One of my colleagues probably maintains an active basis of communications between her and our firm. Did I read that right? Yes, but you, that, you, that, that was you my need question, to find the term. If I read you, that right, sir. Now, you, part of the services that you provide, that your firm provides to Mr. Depp is to pay his, his, the bills to his doctors, correct? Yes. And you make payments relating to maintenance or damages to his properties, correct? Yes. Now, you were contacted in early 2016, right? You testified to that to, to do work on behalf of Mr. Depp? We were engaged in engaged. March of 2016, if that's your question. Right, right. Around February 10th, is that when you were first contacted? I do not recall the date. And you said you were introduced by executives, a uh, guy named Richard Smith at the Bank of California? Yes. Mr. Depp owed a um, significant amount of money to the Bank of California at that time, correct? No. He owed money to the Bank of California, correct? I do not recall that he had an active indebtedness with the Bank of California. He had other uh, commercial loans, but not with the Bank of California. And after you were brought on, you developed an understanding that Mr. Depp's financial status was very challenging, correct? It was challenging, but we had an ability to resolve the problems if they were properly addressed. He had liquidity problems, right? He had substantial assets in excess of his liabilities, but he had short-term obligations that needed to be satisfied. Let me just ask that again. At the time that you were brought on, he had liquidity problems, correct? Can you define liquidity for me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. At the time he was brought on, he had liquidity problems, correct? I would define the term liquidity as where the short-term assets are less than the short-term, excuse me, are less than the short-term liabilities. And if that's how you're defining liquidity, I would agree. In layman's terms, terms that, that I can understand, because I don't, I don't speak all the, the kind of business school terms that you speak, he didn't have enough money at the time, correct? He was spending more than he was bringing in, correct? Yes. And you gave him advice about how he could hopefully get out of that problem, correct? Yes. Okay. And just to be clear, uh, Mr. White, because you, you've testified to, to some degree of knowledge about um, wine that you, you, you allege that Ms. Hurd requested. So you seem to have some, some knowledge of, of Mr. Depp's spending. Ms. Hurd didn't, she didn't buy any of the dozens of properties that Mr. Depp owned, correct? Correct. He owned she, the assets prior to their marriage. She didn't pay $5 million to blast Hunter Thompson's ashes out of a cannon, did she? Not to my knowledge. She didn't buy a yacht that she couldn't afford and then have to sell it to J.K. Rowling, did she? Not to my knowledge. Now let's talk about that meeting on April 21st, 2016. You said the meeting started at about 7.30 p.m.? Yes. And lasted till maybe 9.30, is that right? Yes. And you have no idea, no personal knowledge where Mr. Depp went after he left that meeting, do you? That is correct. I did not go with him. I went home. And at that meeting, Mr. Depp was given some catastrophic news about his business, correct? He was given news that he needed to address a number of financial issues, but I had a strategy and plan to fully resolve them. That news that he was given that night was catastrophic, wasn't it? No.
May I approach, Your Honor? No. Right. Yes, sir. Mr. White, let's do this again with another under oath series of statements. You gave testimony in the UK trial, did you not? Yes. And that testimony was under oath, correct? Yes. All right. And in front of you, I have your testimony from the UK trial, and you gave that testimony on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? I gave it honestly. Okay. You gave it on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? You were one of his witnesses called. That correct? is correct. Okay. Can you please turn to page 865? And it's just the second page of the document, upper left. Before that, the questions are talking about this meeting on April 21st, 2016. And you were asked the question, question, now Mr. Depp was given some catastrophic news about his business. Answer, that is correct. Did I read that right? You did, but remember, that, that, that was no, I get a chance you, you to answer my question, sir. You answered I my did question. not define sir, that. Term. Sir, Mr. You'll have a chance. The, the attorney will get back up and, and they redirect you, okay? So if you could just answer his question, that's fine. And the reason I'm asking, sir, is because you just gave the exact opposite testimony here. So that's, what, that's why we pointed that out. Um, now, you at this meeting, you had a discussion about his financial affairs and a necessity to formulate a revised business strategy and plan, correct? Yes. And you talked about the following financial information. You talked about bank obligations and tax liabilities, right? Yes which means money you owe to either the government or banks, correct? Yes. You talked about assets that he needed to sell, correct? Yes. Properties and things like that that he needed to sell to generate money? Correct. You talked about ways to reduce spending, correct? Yes. And you talked about how to get new engagements, correct? Yes. How to get new gigs, right? Not how to get them, but I encourage him to, to get them. Uh, I'm understood. not an agent. I, I appreciate do not that. procure his engagements. And the, understood. You, you talked about the need to get new gigs to generate additional money to help uh, address these financial woes that he was experiencing, correct? Yes. You also told him at that meeting that um, his taxes, he hadn't paid taxes in years, correct? No, that's not correct. That he had not paid any taxes in years is not correct. That that he was significantly delinquent in federal tax obligations dating back years, correct? I don't know how you're defining years. There were delinquent liabilities. I addressed them uh, and formulated a plan. And you talked about the significant delinquent tax liabilities that would run into the millions of dollars for taxes unpaid, correct? That is correct. And so after receiving these, this catastrophic news, as we discussed, you have no idea where Mr. Depp went when he walked out of the doors of his office, correct? I do not know okay. where he went. Can you pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 936, please? And Mr. White, I'm, I'm not going to... Um, this is a long, a long document um, that we can we can scroll through. But what I'll I'll represent to you and, and Michelle can sort of scroll down is that these these appear to be 
Mr. Depp's tax returns for Mr. Depp and his companies from 2009 to 2019. Do you see that? Yes. And um, these are our returns as part of your um, role as his CPA firm now, his business manager firm now, you, your firm prepares these tax returns, correct? Yes. And you maintain these tax returns in the ordinary course of your business, correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I, I know there's going to be plenty of redaction to do, but I just would like to move these into evidence. I don't plan to publish them or anything at this point. Objection, Your Honor. You want to approach? All right, so 936 will come into evidence, but I'll wait for redactions and they will not be published, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. White, you, you understood that Mr. Depp showed up hours late for work on Pirates 5, correct? That is not correct. Are you familiar with Tracy Jacobs? Yes. That's Mr. Mr. Depp's uh, former agent, correct? Yes. And at the time that she was serving as his agent, part of her job responsibilities, to, to the best of your understanding, was to communicate with you about Mr. Depp's financial affairs, correct? To the extent she had knowledge, Right. Yes, she would communicate. And, and you and she did communicate about um, Mr. Depp, correct? During the period of her engagement, yes, we yes. did communicate. Okay. Um, can you pull up Defendant's Exhibit 874, please, Michelle? Mr. White, do you, do you see here this text exchange between you and Tracy Jacobs? Yes. And your, your texts are in, in white and Ms. Jacobs are in blue, correct? Yes. Michelle, could you please scroll to um, the document that, that – um, is bait stamp DEP 19246. It's about the fifth or sixth one down, please. Mr. White, do you see here the third text down from Tracy Jacobs to you? Um, saying, thanks, I got a call from Disney last week saying he showed up five Objection, hours Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not hearsay, it's party opponent. She's his agent. We've, I'm happy to approach if you'd like to discuss. Mm
Mr. White, um, we just saw the text that I started reading. Do you remember that text? Yes. Okay. We're gonna just gonna show you uh, and, and move for admission of that that page of the document with that text. Um, so I just wanted, since you won't see anything else, I just wanted you to to orient yourself that that is the text that we were just reading. Okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. You're all right. That page or that text? They're gonna redact it. Just just that one text. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I would move for admission of this document as, I guess we could call it D Defendants 874A. Okay, 874A with the redactions, all right? Thank yes, you. Your Honor. Mr. White, um, you, you, you just testified uh, a, a few minutes ago that you, you didn't have any understanding of Mr. Depp showing up late for work on Pirates 5, but in fact, you received this text from Tracy Jacobs that says, thanks, I got a call from Disney last week saying he showed up five hours late for ADR work in London for Pirates 5. I really need to speak to him before he starts work on his ne next project in LA. Did I read that right? Permission to publish this, Your Honor? Sorry. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Do you want me to, do you want me to respond? I just wanted to ask you if, if, I, if I read that right, that you received this text message saying in part, I got a call from Disney last week saying he showed up five hours late for ADR work in London for Pirates 5. I really need to speak to him before he starts work on this next project in LA. Did I read that right? I believe you read it right. Thank you. Now, at some point you became familiar, you can go ahead and take that. At some point, you became familiar, as you've testified, with what Amber planned to do with money that she got from Mr. Depp in the divorce, correct? It was the understanding from the beginning the money would be contributed to charities. The two charities, to the Children's Hospital, of L Children's Hospital of L.A. and the ACLU, correct? That is correct. And as we discussed, you wrote checks to those two organizations that were part of uh, Mr. Depp's divorce payment, but they were just sent directly to those organizations, correct? Yes. Can you please pull up um, defendant's exhibit um, 1639? Actually, let's do, let's do defendant's exhibit, um, yeah, we'll do 1639. Mr. White, this is a letter from you to the ACLU Foundation dated August 24th, 2016, correct? Yes. And um, as, as part of your, your work for your hundred or so high profile, high net worth clients, you've helped clients set up pledged contributions to charities before, correct? Yes. And sometimes those payments are made over a period of time, correct? Yes. Charitable donations aren't always paid at once, correct? That is correct. And when you make payments on behalf of your clients to charities, um, is it customary for you to send a cover letter like this? In some instances, yes. In some instances, no. Okay. But in and all instances, that there is a signed agreement and an understanding that when the payments yeah, that, will that, be made. Sir, that, that wasn't my question. My question was just, is it customary for you to send a letter like this? Um, and I think you've answered that. And so when you send letters like this on behalf of your clients, do you, do you prepare such letters in the ordinary course of your business? In some instances, yes. And when you, in the instances in which you prepare those letters, do you then maintain those letters in the ordinary course of your business? Yes. Your Honor, I'd move for admission of Defendant's Exhibit 1639. Any objection? No. All right, 1639 in evidence, and you can publish it to the jury. Thank you. And Michelle, if you could please just scroll through, Mr. White, I just want you to see there's the, the letter here. Um, we'll come back to the letter. And then there's, there's the check that you're making out to the ACLU. Then there's, I guess, the envelope or something, right? Correct. Okay. If you can go back to the letter, please. So in this, in this, uh, in this cover letter, you tell the ACLU that you're enclosing a check for $100,000 
and that the donation is being made in accordance with Ms. Hurd's pledged gift uh, of three and a half million to the ACLU Foundation, correct? Yes. And you also write that the check represents, uh, just go ahead, that, that, that the check represents uh, the first of multiple scheduled installments, correct? It was my understanding that yeah, she was going to contribute three million five hundred thousand dollars to you wrote, children. Sir. You've asked me a question. I'm trying to reduce the No, I, I was actually just asking if that's what you wrote. Would you ask the question again, please? Yeah, you write this check represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Miss Hurd's three and a half million dollar pledged gift. It was my correct. understanding she was going to contribute the money, and that's okay, consistent sir. With I, my I response. just asked if that's what you wrote. Let's. I think you've answered that. Can we please? Pull up uh, exhibit 1596. Your Honor, before we go to the next exhibit, can, can I raise an issue? With, with, okay, with sure. The bar? Thanks. Mr. White, uh, is this uh, a letter similar to what we just looked at for the ACLU, a letter um, that you wrote that accompanied the check that you sent to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles Foundation? Yes. And this uh, letter and the whatever payment, or sorry, this letter is one that you would have prepared in the ordinary course of business, correct? Yes. And you would have maintained this letter in the ordinary course of business, correct? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Exhibit 1596. All right, 1596 in evidence. You can publish it to the jury. And Mr. White, this letter also says at the bottom that it represents the check that accompanies this letter, represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Ms. Hurd's $3.5 million pledged gift, correct? When I composed a letter that was my understanding that she was going to give three point five million dollars to charity, I, I, I re you're really not answering my question. My question was simply: I, I understand that you you want to you want to speak your own narrative here, but my question was simply that this letter says that this check represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Miss Hurd's three and a half million dollar pledged gift. Correct? We can both read the letter, and the answer is yes. Thank you, sir. Now. You hosted a dinner with Mr. Depp um, and Adam Waldman in, in 2016, correct? I do recall that. And that was the first time that uh, Mr. Depp had been introduced to Mr. Waldman, correct? I do not know that. Be factual. Now, you, you are not an expert on California divorce law, right? Correct. And you're not an expert on the division of marital property in California, correct? I'm not an expert, but I've been actively involved in numerous cases involving the disillusionment of marriage and the related uh, proceeds that are distributed to each respective party. Now, you can't give any sort of legal opinion or testimony as to whether or not Ms. Hurd would have been entitled to more in the divorce settlement with Mr. Depp than she received, correct? I'm not an attorney at law. Okay. I don't have um, legal opinions. So you've never met Amber Heard, correct? That is correct. The first time you've ever seen her in person is here in this courtroom this afternoon, correct? That's my recollection. And you have no personal knowledge of whether Mr. Depp engaged in domestic abuse against my client, correct? I've never witnessed him involved in any abuse, and obviously I would never met her. I could not respond to that inquiry. So the answer to my question is that it's correct, that you have no personal knowledge of whether Mr. Depp engaged in domestic abuse against Amber Heard. That is correct. I have no knowledge. Nothing further. Period. All right. Redirect. Mr. Dennison. 
Can we pull up um, Defendants 1596? Sir, could you read the last line of your letter? This check represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Ms. Hurd's $3.5 million pledged gift. What was the schedule for those payments? They were scheduled... I, I don't know the schedule because I don't have a copy of any pledge that she made, if that's your question. Okay. Thank you very much. One more question. Has Mr. Depp paid all his taxes? Yes, he has. He's fully current with all of his federal, uh, foreign, and state tax obligations. Thank you. All right. No further questions, Mr. Dennison? No further questions. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? No. No. All right, Mr. White, you're free to go. Thank you, sir. Just be very careful stepping down there, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, your next witness is remote witness, correct? Yes. All right. Let me just give him a <laughs> Wait a moment. Your Honor, may we just ask what witness they plan to call? I, I see a Mr. Connolly in the lobby, so I'm assuming that must be... That must be the one. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad we got that one. All right. Mr. Connolly, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes, sir. Yep, hi. Yeah. Can you turn your camera on, sir? Okay, there we go, sir. There we go. All right, sir, if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of law? I do. All right. All right, and uh, good afternoon, Mr. Connolly. Good afternoon. And would you please state your full name for the record? Malcolm Connolly. And Mr. Connolly, uh, where are you testifying from at the moment? Uh, from home, uh, Essex, UK. And, and where do you live? I live in Essex, UK. Mr. Connolly, what is your occupation? Uh, at present, um, close protection officers. Uh, I've had a couple of professions. I'm a bricklayer at the trade. I was in the corrections facility, Pentonville, HMS prison. But right now, yeah, I'm a protection officer. Okay, and, and can you tell us a little bit, uh, just generally, what that means? It means uh, looking after the personal well-being, the physical well-being of any client you're detailed to. And how long have you been in the personal security business? 25 years. Over the course of those 25 years, have you had any other kinds of jobs? Yeah, as I said, I was a corrections officer for uh, a Majesty prison. Are you familiar with the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? I am, yes. 
And how do you know Mr. Depp? Uh, I know Mr. Depp, uh, long, uh, maybe about 23 years ago, 24 years ago, uh, I worked for a company called uh, Music and Arts. The guy who owned that company was Jerry Judge. Uh, Jerry started working with Johnny way back in the early days, and I was detailed to looking after uh, Johnny's ex, Vanessa Parody, and uh, Jack and Lily Rose, Johnny's kids. And my, my job was just to make sure they were safe when Johnny was at work. So that job, after about a year and a half, two years, Johnny uh, asked me to go over him directly and we'll find someone else to do the, the kids and that. And that's how I came across Johnny. That's how, that's why I, that's how I personally met Johnny there. Can you ballpark for us about what year that was? Oh, 2006. Okay. And can you generally just tell us a little bit about what you do uh, for Mr. Depp as his uh, security guard? Um, I will escort Johnny to everyday uh, public places. Make sure he's okay. Make sure uh, you know he's not he's not in any danger. First of all, do the recce. You know, you, you go along first. It's usually a two man team. It's a two man detail. You go along, do your recce. Make sure all the ins and outs are sorted. No compromises. Any risks involved? Do a risk assessment. We do the job. I look after him. Basically, I look after Johnny whenever we're in public domain. Whenever we're going to be in, in a public domain, I will look after Johnny. Okay, and uh, and how about the defendant in this case, Amber Heard? Are you are you familiar with Miss Heard? I am familiar with Miss Heard. Yeah, I um, I first met Miss Heard in probably two thousand and I don't recall the exact the actual date. Probably about two thousand and ten, maybe around there. Uh, she came into the UK to do a promotional job for a movie called Drive Angry. Uh, the, my boss, Jerry, Jerry Judge, asked me to take the detail. Uh, went and met Amber, started the job. Amber was with her ex, Tosh, Tasha, and uh, I looked after Amber for a week. Pleasant week, it was fine, great. Uh, does anything stand? Uh, sorry, yeah. After that week, uh, I never seen Amber again until we did uh, the Rum Diaries, the, the premiere uh, after show of the Rum Diaries. Okay, uh, so let, let's move to the to the Rum Diary then. Uh, when did you see Miss Heard? Um, well, how did you see Miss Heard in connection with uh, the Rum Diary? Um, we well, we we done the Rum Diary premiere. We went to the after show party. Uh, you know, I'm busy working, doing my job, myself and Jerry Judge. Uh, seen Amber across the floor, Amber seen me, uh, just basically come across the floor, said hello, how are you doing, you know, the usual chit-chat, we chit-chatted for a, a minute or two. Uh, Johnny asked me how I actually knew Amber, explained. Uh, that's the last I spoke to Amber that night, I was too busy with Johnny, I was doing my job, you know. Uh, did you know at the time, and, uh, well, well, let's back up for a second. Where was that premiere? Um, do you know what? I don't recall. I, I, I think it was in, I think it was in L.A. Okay. I don't uh, actually recall. Okay. Uh, did you know at the time of that uh, premiere in probably L.A., but possibly somewhere else, um, did you know at the time that Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard were seeing each other romantically? No, I didn't. I, I actually didn't. I mean, I, I surmised that uh, there was a spark there, you know. It wasn't until uh, maybe, a, a, maybe a, a few days later, a few nights later, we were at a dinner party somewhere, a, a promotional thing, and uh, Amber and Johnny were, were basically, you know, sparking, sparking up. They were, they were getting together. Then I, I sort of assumed that, that you know, there was a romance happening there, budding there, you know. Okay. 
Over the course of Mr. Depp and Mr. Hurd's relationship with each other, about how often would you say you saw them together? Well, in the beginning, actually not a lot, you know, not a lot. Uh, maybe once a week, uh, twice a week at a push. But then it started, uh, well, it started maturing into something, into a relationship. So m more often, more often as the time went on, you know. And as, as time went on, did you have an opportunity to observe uh, how Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interacted with each other? Uh, at the beginning, um, oh, you know, lovey-dovey, everything was great. The, uh, the honeymoon period was on and it was, uh, yeah, it was good. I mean, it was, it was great, great to see Johnny happy again. Amber was, you know, lovely, charming, as, as he usually is, you know, good as gold. And then things, you know, things started to change. Amber started to change. Amber started uh, getting a bit, I would say, a bit more... Uh, feisty, uh, demanding, you know. I could see that Amber wanted to wear the pants in this relationship. That was pretty obvious. And what in particular made you think that, that you observed personally? Um, just just the way, uh, you know, if something wasn't quite right or... Uh, 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 Amber, could, uh, Amber could get a bit frosty at the drop of a hat. So as time went on, you know, I could see them I could see them change. I could see. I could see Amber change. I could see Johnny getting quieter. Uh, you get into the car and nobody was speaking. And you know, it just things started changing, changing. Amber started getting a bit more grumpy. As I'm saying. How did she? Uh, how did she get along with you? Absolutely fine. I. I. I uh, Amber was fine with me. Was, Amber was never anything but professional, polite. With me, you know, she was there. Uh, no, Amber was fine with me. Did you ever uh, see or hear any arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Uh, when you say see, I heard. I mean, I could hear at times in, in certain accommodations we'd be staying at. Uh, I could hear uh, Amber, yeah, screaming, you know. I could hear shouting and bawling, and yeah, I could hear it going on, yeah. But I, I mean, I wasn't there every every single night. When we're when we're working in the UK, there's nights maybe I'd get home because Jerry would be there. But yeah, yeah, I did hear, yeah, definitely. For a fact, I, I would I could hear sometimes the shouting and bawling, you know. It's most mo mostly I could hear Amber screaming, you know. And about how. I recognize this was years ago, but can you can you estimate for us how regularly that happened? Uh, I can't say regularly. I can't say it was like every day, but you know, it get more regular. It got more. It got more often than not. Did you ever? Uh, did you ever witness any physical violence between the two of them? No. No, never. I'd never seen any physical violence. It's not a thing. That, uh, it's not a thing people would do in front of security. It's not a thing that would, it would happen in front of myself or Jerry Judge or Sean Bett or some. It just wouldn't happen. It, it wouldn't happen. It, it, no, I never seen any phys physical security. I never seen any hands on. No. Okay. What do you mean you you never saw any hands on? Well, I never seen any slapping or grabbing or punching or hitting. I'd never seen any of that physically. I, well, I, well, I'll tell you what, I, there was a, an instance, maybe two instances that come to my mind. One incident was on a, a private plane. Uh, I, I can't recall if it was a, a domestic flight or an international flight. I'm sitting, Johnny and Amber, or Johnny, whoever he, he's flying with, will sit up at the four table. There's a four table up aft, and uh, myself and my colleagues, we'll sit down the forward end of the plane. So I, I usually look up the fuselage that way, with my back to the nose. Amber had her back to me, Johnny's sitting across the table, and there's a bit of bickering going on. I can't hear, because you know, you're talking about jet craft. I can't actually hear, and it's more animated than verbal. And uh, 
I see a, I see a lighter, a plastic lighter, bounce off his chest, boom, bounce, you no, know, bounce off his chest. So right away I think, well, this this is going to escalate. Or it's, say they're going to go one way or the other. I don't think it came to much. Uh, I remember Johnny just sort of, you know, smirking and looking away as if to say, you know, well, what is that it? Kind of, kind of attitude, you know. And Johnny, Johnny, he tips his hat, puts his head against the window, and whoa, I, I'm out, you know. Uh, another time, uh, I was at the loft apartment. Uh, I was in the, the security room in the loft apartments with a, a security guard called, uh, do you know what, I can't recall if it was Sean Bay or Do a guy called Donovan. Anyway, I got the text. I was down there to pick him up to go to uh, the West Hollywood accommodation. And uh, I got the text. Uh, objection no. to, the, to the extent he's going to talk about what the text is, that's hearsay. Uh, you, you can just tell us what you observed without looking at the, without recounting the oh, contents of the text. Okay, okay. I'm instructed to go and get Johnny and because we're leaving. Thank you. Object objection. He just he just said what he was instructed to do. That All right. I'll, I'll sustain the objection if you can. What What did you do after you received the text? I go to the the loft apartment. Uh, the door was ajar slightly, just slightly, just a, a what you call a crack in the door. Push the door open. And I go in. Shouting. There's a bit of shouting going on. Uh, I can't really. I can't hear. I'm in. I'm in the wrong area of the apartment. But as I turn, as I turn to the left into the, the more of the lounge area, there's a soda can. I, like I, I don't know, if, I don't know if it's a Coca Cola or a, a Sprite or I don't know what it was. But it's launched from the mezzanine, and Johnny's uh, had a, this huge TV, the biggest TV I've ever seen in fact, But this, and it's on this mechanical arm, which is an actual piece of artwork that Johnny had uh, got uh, commissioned. And anyway, this, this big mechanical arm holds this TV. So this can of pop, you want to call it pop, smashes on that but by force, let me add, because it means a bang, boom. And all I, I can hear is it spraying all over the place. Johnny has already got his jacket on and a, and a bag over his shoulder. That's why he's called me in, because we're leaving. I just pick up the other bags, two bags, pick up two bags, Put my hand through Johnny's arm and say, right, boss, we're leaving. We walk out the door. We walk out the door and we go. Halfway to to the West Hollywood, Johnny's already calmed down. You know, he's like, oh, man, can you... Uh, objection you know, objection to the extent he's talking about uh, what Mr. Depp is saying. All right. I'll sustain that objection. Continue. Uh, if, you, if you have... Uh, I, I think we can move on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question. <laughs> Uh, just, just to clarify, um, Mr. Connolly, when uh, when the soda can was launched from the mezzanine, where was Mr. Depp in relation to where the soda can landed? Uh, probably ten feet, ten, uh, probably ten feet back from that. Ten feet back from that. Okay, and just to make sure we're on the same page, when you refer to the loft departments, uh, what are you referring to? The downtown LA uh, Eastern Building. Okay. Um, what was your, did, did you form any understanding as to where, um, as to who had thrown the soda can? Um, Objection, well, speculation. No. Oh, good. Oh, hold on, sir. What is speculation? Foundation. I'm just asking him if he, if he formed an understanding, and he can state the basis he for that if he, it, if he so. did. Wait, if you want to lay a foundation. Did you, did you uh, to your knowledge, was Ms. Heard present in the apartment at the time? Objection leading? Yes. I'll, I'll allow I could it. hear her. I, I never seen her physically, but I could hear her voice. Yes. Okay. And, and where did her, could you tell where her voice was coming from? Upstairs, just upstairs. Okay. She wasn't on the lower, the lower apartment with us, so I can only imagine she was upstairs. Other than the uh, other than the cigarette lighter and the soda can, anything else similar to that that you observed? Mm, no, no, I can't say no, no. Did you ever observe any physical injuries on Miss Heard? Never, no. How about on Mr. Depp? 
Yeah. The, yes. Yeah. It started off with maybe a, a, a scratch once in a while, or a, you know, a, a swelling, but it, it got more. It got more. Yeah. I'm not talking that he was marked every every week or every two weeks, but yeah, he he he, he sustained marks. Yeah, definitely. He was getting marked. And can you describe for us what you can remember? Um, yeah. Um, Objection, Your Honor. Can we, can we burn, burn okay. for a minute? All right. Hold on, Mr. Connolly, for a minute. Uh, so, Mr. Connolly, you can you can continue uh, responding. I, I think the question was just, can you generally describe for us what you remember about the the marks you saw on Mr. Depp? Yes, uh, as I was saying, in the prison service, you're taught to uh, pick up log in your mind, mental mental logging in your mind, marks, bruises, bully patterns, stuff. What I noticed straight away was most of these marks and most of these things through my training was happening in the left hand side of his face and it would be scratches on his neck, maybe a, a, a fat lip in the corner, maybe a bruising on, on the eye socket. Um, dull impacts, you know, except for obviously the scratches maybe on his, below his left ear. Sometimes it would be two, two marks, two lines, two trams, one. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it was getting, it was getting more regular. I'm not, as I say, not every week, but it was definitely happening. Yeah. Can we see um, plaintiffs' exhibit one sixty two, please? And Mr. Connolly, uh, are you able to see the picture on? I, I assume you can see it on your screen. Yeah, just can I thank you, please? Yeah, hi, yeah. And do you... That uh, is, um, yeah, I, I know that picture. I took that picture. You that took picture the... picture on the orange. Yeah, I took the picture. Can you just quickly tell us uh, what, what this picture is? This picture is a uh, Miss Heard and Johnny's honeymoon on the Orient Express on the East Line from Bangkok to Singapore. You travel through Malaysia, stopping at Kuala, uh, Kuala Lumpur and a few other places on the way down. And that is in the the dining coach, I think. Yeah, dining coach, that's where that is. The guy on the left there with the silver bands around his, he's the waiter. He's the, the waiter, the, the details to look after us. The guy in the bow tie, uh, he's guest relations manager. Mr. Mr. Connolly, uh, just hold on one second. Um, before we continue describing the document, I'd, I'd move for the admission of plaintiff's trial exhibit 162 Any? and that it be published to the jury. Any objection? Uh, I'd, like to go, I'd like to approach it. Okay. All right, and, and Mr. Connolly, I apologize for cutting you off, but could you just continue to describe for us uh, what we're looking at in this picture? Yeah, as I said, the guy in the bow tie, he's a um, guest relations manager. He was detailed to, you know, fix us up anything we needed, uh, you know, to excursions and transports and stuff. Then it's Miss Heard. The guy, that's the chef who looked after this. He, looked, he, he cooked for us. He's a great chef, by the way. Uh, yeah, he looked after us. And that's Johnny. And I also noticed, if you look at that picture, 
Like I said, on the left hand side under his eye, there's a swelling. And you see a, a swelling just on the left hand side of his nose and under his left eye. And what do you interpret that swelling to be? So what, do I, what do I interpret it as? That's uh, either he's, he's walked into a door or a door's walked into him. Okay. Can you tell us anything? And we can take this down, I think. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Connolly, can you tell us, uh, well, first of all, what, uh, do you recall what year Mr. Depp and, and Ms. Hurd went on their honeymoon uh, in the picture we were just looking at? Um, that would, is it, I don't know, is it 2013, 2013? Okay, and were you, uh, well, you testified that you took the picture, so you were there, I assume? Absolutely, yes. Um, what can you tell us about that trip generally, and particularly focused on how Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were interacting with each other? Um, started off good, started off good. Uh, Johnny's cabin was maybe 15 meters down the corridor from mine. There was no cabins in between. There, there was uh, like storerooms, like, you know, blankets and cutlery and stuff. Uh, so the, the, the cabin was quite a but a, a, not a, a big massive distance, but you know it wasn't like the, the trip started fine, absolutely fine. I think it was five, six days, five days maybe. Two days, three days into the trip, uh, I can see Johnny going down. I can see him coming down. You know, uh, he's just he's just not enjoying this. He's not enjoying this. But it's, you know, I, I can't. It's, it's not my business to to step in and that. I just do my job, but I can see he's not enjoying this. He's just not, he's not happy. He's not happy. Did you ever observe any arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd in this time frame? Just uh, not arguments, but uh, some frostiness. Ms. Hurd uh, sort of demanded that, you know, we have our own, our own uh, dining cart, if you like. So me doing my job, I inquire to the, the guest relations guy there that you've seen in the photograph. And he quite rightly tells me that, you know, there's other objection VIPs hearsay. Objection, objection hearsay. Right. Objection to hearsay. All right. I, I think we can move on. Okay, I'll yeah. sustain objection. Next question. All right, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Connolly, um, well, taking a step back for a minute and changing topics slightly, um, have you ever seen Mr. Depp use any drugs? I don't think I'll, 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 I'll allow it. Go ahead. Yes, I've seen him uh, smoke marijuana. Uh, I had my suspicions. I have my suspicions that when he goes off to the bathroom, he he, he, he probably does a bit of cocaine. I've never seen him do it. As Mr. Depp would never do a line or anything of cocaine in front of me, or Jerry Judge, or Sean Bet, or anybody. Mr. Johnny Depp would never compromise my my license, my position, and embarrass me like that. It wouldn't happen. So to answer to your question, I, I've seen him smoke weed, yes. You noticed any particular, what changes, if any, have you noticed in his behavior when he's under the influence of marijuana? Um, to be honest, a bit more, a, a bit more, uh, relaxed, no, sort of uptight, but he, I mean, he's he's not he's not a, he's, he's not out of his head. He, he's perfectly functioning. I mean, he, he can talk about anything, any conversation you want to talk about. He's neither up nor down with that. You know, he's, he really isn't. He's got a very high tolerance for any substance, Johnny. You know, I would say so. You know, I think uh, Jack Sparrow's more drunk than Johnny Depp. To be honest. <laughs> So, okay, so that's that's uh, marijuana. What about alcohol? Same question. Um, he likes, he, well, he used to like a wine. And the last, the last, um, I would say the last couple of years, that's dropped drastically as well. It's, uh, in, the, in my last year with Johnny, it's quite actually rare now. It's not rare, but he 
he's not he's not a big boozer now. He's not a boozer now, you know, he's not he, and he was never he was never out his head in wine, he was never you know I think I've seen him drunk in the twenty five twenty odd years I've been with Johnny, I think I've seen him drunk twice. And but but when I say drunk I mean drunk. Other than that, there's not a lot of difference in Johnny's demeanour or behaviour. Well you're drinking alcohol or, or smoking weed, you know. Okay. And and finally, uh same qu same question for the time periods when you formed the suspicion that he was under the influence of cocaine. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, could you ask me that again? What, what changes in his behavior, if any, did you observe on those occasions when you suspected but didn't know for sure that he was under the influence um, of cocaine? Well, again, uh, through the, tra the training I had in, uh, you know, the, the HMP prison service, it just seemed a bit, uh, a bit more, I don't know, happier, up, not so down, you know. But I wouldn't say he's not leaping around, kicking his heels or anything. He, you know, he, he pick his guitar up and, he, and then he gets he gets right into the guitar and there's, there's no major changes really. You know, he just he, he's fine, you know. Now, you mentioned you traveled with uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd on their honeymoon um, in, 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 on the Orient Express. Um, where else have you traveled with them? Uh, well, all over the world. Uh, Japan, China, G uh, Germany. I've been all over the States. Uh, went to an interesting little place, uh, Hickville. That was, that's an interesting story. Uh, yeah, all over the world. Uh, Australia, went to Australia. As far away as that. And and uh, let's let's take that one at a time. Hicksville, you said. Yeah, Hicksville. Yeah, um, it's a uh, funky. It's, I remember it because I remember Hicksville because it was a funky. It's a real funky place, you know. Uh, with uh, Amber and. Uh, Johnny, they've decided they're going to go to Hicksville for uh, you know a day, uh, a day and a night, I think it was. So we all off the trot. Uh, Amber with her friends all head off, and uh, well, Amber travelled with Johnny, but her friends all head off. Uh, I followed. Johnny wanted to drive his own. Uh, he got a beautiful big uh, customised Plymouth. I think it's a fifty-eight or fifty. I don't, not not an expert, but you had to customise. Do you want to drive this 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 car? Myself and uh, his, his assistant at the time, Nathan Holmes, we use another of Johnny's cars, and we follow behind. We uh, we get to Joshua Tree, Hicksville, the stunning as you can imagine, but it's uh, it's, it's it's done in a, a in a very funky theme. All the caravans are different themes. You know, like uh, mine's was an old railway kibbutz. With the old, you know, the old, the uh, you know, fairground fortune teller head that comes around and stuff, all that. Kind of stuff. Johnny's and Amber's caravan were uh, maybe about 15 meters from mine, maybe 20 meters, and it was that was done in like the 1950s style, you know, like kitschy 1950s kind of thing. And the rest of the caravans were all, you know, like zombies coming out the ground and it was craziness. Anyway, we go there, there's a lot of booze, all the booze comes up, uh, party starts, we're all sort of sitting around in the sun, messing around, party starts, so there's loads of booze and uh, weed, and I think there's mushrooms, uh, some psychedelic mushrooms, or whatever, uh, that's, all, that's going around. But the, the night gets a bit ruined, as, as I'm watching the exactly what's all happening. Everybody's happy, you know, Johnny Amber, everybody's happy. As, a, as I'm watching what's happening, I can see Johnny and Amber getting a bit animated. And they were probably a bit, maybe 25 feet from me. So I approach, and I've been working with Johnny that long. I don't have to really say anything. I only have to look at his face. Uh, uh, and Johnny can talk to me through his face. He didn't need to say a word. So I know what's happening. So, like, and I say in a low voice, 
guys, let's keep this private. Let's, you know, let's start walking towards the caravan. Let's, you know, take this away from here. As I'm walking ahead, you know, just, you know, going ahead, I can hear sort of, you know, bickering behind me. Johnny's trying to talk in his, you know, low tone, you know, you know, keep keep things a bit quiet. But Amber's getting a bit more, a bit, well, a bit more loud, a bit more narky, you know. So anyway, I get him to the caravan, I put him inside, and I go up to my caravan. That's it. I don't hear anything, don't see anything, until the next morning. Uh, we sit around the pool, a couple of hours, and uh, we head back to early. What Mr. prompted you Mr. to... Mr. Monez, before you... Do you have a lot of direct still left in this matter? Uh, one, not terribly much more, maybe 10 We're to 15 minutes. We're going to take our afternoon break then. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take your 15-minute afternoon break, and then uh, we'll come back and continue with the testimony, okay? Don't do any outside research and don't talk to anybody. All right, Mr. Connolly, I'm going to put you in the lobby for our break. Okay, I'm going to come back and put you back in about 4:20 our time. Okay. In about 17 okay. minutes. About 17 minutes, okay, sir. All right. Just don't discuss okay? your test. Okay, All right. Just don't discuss your testimony no. with anybody till then, okay? Okay. Thank All you. All right. Thank you.
we ready for the jury? Okay. All right, Mr. Connolly, can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Right. Can you just count to, count to five for me, please? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect, thank you. All right, next question. All right, Mr. Connolly, um, we were talking about Hicksville there, and, and you made a comment that um, you had suggested to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd that they they keep it private or something along those lines? Uh, I did, yes. My, my question is just what prompted you to make that suggestion? Well, it was getting kind of uh, animated, you know, it was getting animated and, you know, no one wants to see their, uh, air their dirty laundry in public. Uh, were they both animated? Uh, more so Amber. Johnny, yes, but more so Amber. Okay. Do you remember anything in particular that Miss Hurd was saying at the time? I don't recall, no. As I say, it wasn't really coherent. It was more the animation, the, you know, the, the head movements and the, the stern looks and stuff that, that made, prompted me to do what I have to do, you know? Okay. Uh, shifting gears a little bit. Um, you, you listed out various places that you traveled with, with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, and I think you listed Japan, Germany, Hicksville, and Australia. Do I have that right? Correct, yes. When were you in Australia? That would be 15, 2015, uh, Pirates 5. And uh, what were you doing in Australia? Uh, my job. Uh, I, in that occasion, I flew out first. I used the fly out first to do the advance. Uh, the advance includes the checking of accommodation. Not so much accommodation because uh, Nathan Holmes, uh, Ben King, and the chef called Russell, they would already been at, <coughs> been at the home, excuse me, been at the home and got that sorted out. My main concern was uh, locations, transport, uh, local security, uh, drivers, you know, making sure all that's in line before Johnny gets there. Jerry Judge would have travelled with Johnny in Australia. On arrival, uh, I would have picked him up at the airport, as we do, take him to the, the house, or whatever accommodation we're staying in, and uh, I, would, I would have peeled off, I'd have left it at that, went back to my apartment. Johnny would have been in maybe, it could be up to a week, for you know, makeup, costume before any shooting starts. In which time it gives me a time to run around some locations, the studio, check out the studio, the locations, as it, well as be around for if Johnny wants to go for dinner at night anywhere. I would check out these places as well. Uh, Mr. Connolly, I, I'm sorry, I, I just had a little trouble hearing you there. Could I might be the might be the connection, but could you speak maybe just a little bit slower? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, as I say, my job in, in Australia is just to secure all the advance. So I would check out, make sure the local drivers are there, all the cars are in order, the accommodations in order, the locations for shooting are all safe, liaison with production, what's expected of them. I would pick him up at the airport when he arrives, take him to the accommodation, peel off, 
go and check out a few restaurants in case you want to go out. And if nothing's happening, uh, stand down for that evening. Uh, does anything stand out to you about your time in Australia in 2015? <laughs> yeah, Johnny lost a finger. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. One afternoon, I was uh, instructed to go to Johnny's accommodation. Objection! And can we just approach? Okay. Him and, all right. Thanks. Hold on just a minute, Mr. Connor. All right, Mr. Mr. Connolly, um, please continue. But but as you as you go, please avoid um, discussing the substance of any communications that you had with Mr. Depp uh, or or his security, and just focus on what you observed. Okay. I arrive uh, at Johnny's accommodation with my driver, Andrew. I noticed that there's an SUV, one of the security, the, the RST, resident security team. One of their vehicles is sitting outside the door with no driver. So I just assume there's, well, something up, there's a security car there, but no driver. As I approach the door, I hear a, a muffled, like a muffled sh shouting and screaming and you know, quite muffled though, because the entrance to this house, there's a massive oak door. I mean, it's huge, and it's got to be about 25 mil thick. So I, I open it, and it's chaos. It's uh, screaming and shouting, and, but all I, all I can see with my eyes is Johnny. He's wearing a, a, a jacket, a hat, and a bag with his notebooks. I always know that bag because it's a grey canvas bag. And he's, he's sort of, you know, nuts in one hand. So I'm saying, well, hey, what's going on? But, and it's screaming and shouting. It's madness. Amber's, Amber's irate. I mean, tenacious. It's crazy stuff. Johnny's, uh, you know, shouting back. <clears throat> so I've said, Johnny, let's go. Let's go, you know. Uh, I, that's my job to remove him from a situation. Let's get out. I do a couple of steps with him. Johnny, give me five minutes, Mel. Five minutes. Well, he's the boss, you know. There's no there's no bullets flying. So, okay, give him two minutes. Bye bye. I say, let's go, let's go. Eventually, I get him out. I, I manage to get him outside the door. We go downstairs. But Amber appears from somewhere. No, I don't know if Amber was upstairs or in the room to the left or the wherever but she appears and she's screaming you know screaming uh, berating them she's basically berating them uh, yes yeah, fuck off she's saying johnny yeah that's what you do fuck off that's what you do all the time that's all you ever do is fuck off you fuck off with your guys you're fucking coward that's what you fucking do you fucking coward yeah fuck off with your guys your big man all that all that shit that goes with it <coughs> get some downstairs uh, by this time, Amber's on, on the threshold of the, 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 the accommodation. And she's uh, screaming, you know, fuck off, you fucking coward. That these kind of words, you know. And uh, I get him into the car, and I want to sit in the same... I usually sit in the, in the front seat shotgun, but I want to sit in the same seat at the back so I can have a look at look what's going on here and have a chat and have a talk. But when I get around the car, the driver's not locked the door, so he's out the door again. And he's making his way back up the stairs. I get back round again. By the time I get to the top, there's two two concrete stairs to the front door. 
he's just crossing the threshold and the, and the screaming starting again excuse me amber is screaming again johnny let's go let's go and this time it's a wee bit more force and i managed to actually basically pull him out of the place get him into the car doors are locked this time into the car when we take off i uh, got him back to my apartment using uh you know a, a secret way through the, the underground car park and service lifts i get him up to my apartment uh, get him into my apartment uh, wash he start washing his hand basic triaging his hand washing it first aid it's a mess his hand his fingers just a mess it's like one of them cartoon exploding cigars i was I always think in my mind that one of them one of them cigars that blow up you know the cartoons boom and uh and it's so flapping around and i could see bone there's bone there it's all it's smashed to bits and he's you know he's wincing as i'm trying to wash his hand uh, anyway, I sat him down and I phoned uh, Debbie, Debbie the nurse, who, who's living in the same apartment block as me. So that's my first thing, phone Debbie. Phone Debbie about 20 minutes later, if that, I don't recall, uh, maybe 25, maybe half an hour. But it, it, she turns up with uh, Dr. Kipper. So um, <clears throat> Dr. Kipper does his thing, nurse Debbie dresses it all, but Kipper is saying right this there's no this we have to go to the hospital with this there's no there's no other way we have to go to the hospital this has to be seriously looked at we get to the hospital and that's when he, he's uh well he, he that's when his treatment started you know okay um when you when you were in the presence of of mr depp and miss heard in the house in australia um, how far away were you from Miss Heard? Um, when I first entered the house, Miss Heard wasn't uh, visible to me. <clears throat> only Johnny. It's only when we started to leave, Miss Heard appeared, and she's probably, well, you're talking three, two feet, three feet. Did you observe any injuries on Miss Heard? No injuries, no, no injuries. Oh, Alex. I, I'm sorry, what was your answer? No injuries, none. Other than the injury to his finger, did you observe any injuries on, uh, Mr. on Mr. Depp? No, uh, no, uh, no. Well, I say no, you know, there was, there was a mark in his face and I, I, I didn't know what that was, so I never really put it down too much. But uh, in the hospital, I took a photograph, and when I look when I look at that photograph, I can see two injuries. When we're sitting in the car, I'm so, I think oh, I said, oh, hold on, Mr. Khan. Okay. Objection to the extent he's going to be talking about what the mark is on his, since he didn't see what happened, and it's, he's not a doctor, he can't describe what. Sorry. Uh, that's fine, Your Honor. We, we, we can we move on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next on. question. Um. I think you've generally described for us uh, the kinds of things Ms. Heard was saying. How would you describe her overall demeanor when, when she and Mr. Depp were in, the, in, in, in each other's presence in the house in Australia? Um, good days and bad days. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I mean on that particular day. On that particular day? I had never seen him in the house that particular day. The only the time I'd seen uh, Ms. Heard and Johnny in that house is when I arrived there to extract them. And, and how did Miss Heard seem to you when, when you saw her uh, on that day when you arrived to extract him? Crazy. 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 Fierce, you know, fierce. Okay. What was the, uh, what was the last thing Miss Heard said as you were taking Mr. Depp out of the house to, to go to your apartment and then the hospital? Yeah, uh, the last what words I recall hearing is as I'm getting Johnny out is, yeah, just fuck off with your guys. You're fucking covered like you always do. All right. I have no further questions. All right. Cross-examination. Mr. Nadelhoff. Um, 
Mr. Connolly, uh, you still work for Mr. Depp? I do, yeah. Okay. And you've worked for him now for about 18 years? No. Well, t two years ago, you, you said you worked for him for 16 years, so two more years would be 18. No, I, I worked with him. I didn't work for him. I worked for a guy called Jerry Judge in Music and Arts. Johnny Depp never paid me. Johnny Depp started paying me two years ago. Okay, so now you're being so you you were working. Jerry Judge was your Jerry Judge was your boss until he passed away. Is that right? Perfect. Okay, and Perfect. now and now you get paid directly by Mr. Depp, correct? Right. And you're paid a salary by Mr. Depp. No. Okay. And you, Mr. Depp's also provided you gifts, correct? Gifts. Gifts. Money. Gift, yes. Gifts. Yes. No. Yes. He's, yes. Johnny gave me gifts. I've given Johnny gifts. Get, and you've had. He's given you gifts over eighty-five hundred dollars, correct? Eighty-five hundred dollars. Yeah. He gave me a lot more than that. Okay. <laughs> and you're loyal to Mr. Depp, right? I'm. Yes, of course, I'm loyal to Mr. Depp. I'm loyal. I'd be loyal to you if I was working for you. Okay. Um. Now, going to Australia, you said you went to Australia in 2015 with Mr. Depp, correct? Or you went before Mr. Depp, but you, you were there to work for Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And, and Jerry Judge was also there? Not when I arrived, no. But he eventually was, Jerry Judge was eventually in Australia, correct? Correct. And Nathan Holmes was also in Australia as well, as well right? Correct. And Mr. Depp came to Australia in February of 2015, correct? Correct. And when, when Mr. Depp first came to Australia, Amber was not with Mr. Depp, right? I don't recall. I don't recall if Amber arrived with Johnny or uh, Amber arrived later. You don't know one way or the other? No. And Mr. Depp stayed in a house in Australia, correct? Correct. And you and the security team were about 40 minutes away from the house Mr. Depp was renting, correct? 25, 30. 20, well, 30, 40, yeah, you could, yeah you're correct. If it's, a, if it's a traffic day, yeah, 40 minutes at most. And, and alcohol was in the house in Australia, correct? Correct. And Mr. Depp consumed alcohol before Amber arrived in Australia, isn't that right? Yeah, he would have done, yes. Okay. And, you know, if Mr. Depp consumed illegal drugs before Amber arrived in Australia? I don't object to I speculation. Wouldn't I wouldn't know. I overrule all that. Go ahead. And do you know if Mr. Depp spent any time with Marilyn Manson in Australia before Amber arrived? Don't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall Marilyn Manson being there. So you don't. Re so as Mr. Depp's security, you don't know if if Mr. Depp was with no. Marilyn Manson at any time. I, I left. I left Australia to smuggle two dogs back out of Australia back to. No, back no, no. I'm talking Australia. about it. I'm, ta I'm talking about in the beginning of March. 2015, you were that you were you were you don't know one way or the other. No. Were you see, were you seeing Mr. Depp every day? In early not March 2015. No, I, I, no, not the beginning. I had other duties. Okay. So you don't know what Mr. Depp was doing at that time, correct? No, I, I wasn't with him. Okay. And you don't know when Amber arrived into uh, in in Australia, correct? No. Okay. But you do know that Amber stayed with Mr. Depp, right? Yes. Okay. And you talked about a resident security team that was at the um, Australia house. Is that right? That's correct. And were there about four? You, is it? Was there anyone in, from the resident security team in the house when you arrived on um, March eighth, twenty fifteen? No. Okay. And the and the resident security team. Is it your understanding that they were there? That they were kind of guarding the house? Yeah, but. A they would have been in the grounds, but the substantial grounds, real substantial grounds. They would have been at the grounds somewhere. But they didn't. But they didn't go into the house on on March eighth, correct? I don't know. I never seen them in the house. Okay. And so when you arrived at the house and and went and went in, was it just Mr. Depp and Amber Heard? Just Mr. Depp and Amber Heard. Okay. And before there may you... be someone else there. I never visibly seen anyone else. I, okay. I wasn't there long enough to chat to anybody. And, and when you arrived at the house, you could you could hear a ruckus, correct? Yes, uh, well, yes, I, I could hear, uh, not, yeah, yeah, I could hear, def definitely hear something through the, 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 the door, yeah. 
But it, it, you said the door was so thick you couldn't hear the actual words that were being said. Is that right? No, just a, 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 a shouting. And then you saw, then you went in the house and saw Mr. Depp in the foyer, correct? Yes, correct. And Mr. Depp was trying to urinate in the foyer, wasn't he? No. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Depp had his penis out of his, out Objection. Of his pants, didn't he? I think I would remember Relevance. Mr. Depp's penis. Uh, I'll love it. <laughs> Next question. And you were trying to get Mr. Depp out of the house, correct? Correct, I was trying to get Mr. Depp out of the house, yes. And Mr. Depp was refusing to leave the house, was he not? Not so much refused, he just wanted two minutes to see his piece. You took Mr. Depp's arm to try to move him out, but he broke away, isn't that right? Yes. Okay. I mean, so he was strong enough to break away from your grip, correct? No. So you had his arm and he broke away though, correct? No. Isn't that what you just said? No, I let him go. You let go. But it wasn't easy. Boss. It wasn't easy. I'm not easy. going to drag him by it. So Mr. Depp's your boss. You'll do what Mr. Depp wants, correct? No. It's not easy to get Mr. Depp out of the house, correct? It's not easy. Okay. Now, can we put, can we play um, Exhibit 380A, which is already in evidence? Plaintiffs or defendants, I'm sorry. Uh, it's defendants, Exhibit 380A. What, what is this? Uh, sorry, what, what is this? Uh, and this is a recording from Australia, and it's just of Mr. Depp. I don't, I don't think that's in evidence, you, Your Honor. You, hold on. It's not, it's not in evidence. Are plaintiffs exhibit 380A? I, I don't believe there are any recordings from Australia in evidence, Your Honor. I don't I think, have anything I think in this, evidence. There, de there definitely is. It's, it's, it's of just of Mr. Depp. We can... Three, I don't have 380 in evidence. It's 380A. 380. I have, Jamie says it was ID'd, but never admitted. It was never admitted? It was... Uh, Your Honor, the, the recordings from Australia have other voices on them. And We're I, only I asking also... for the, it's only the clip of Mr. Depp. Okay, wait well, I, I, have, also... I have, it's, it, it's actually plaintiff's 380A, minute 33 to 34. What's right. the foundation for using it with this witness? He was at, he was at the house. That's, it's in evidence, it's in that's evidence. fine. So you're playing that clip, correct? Correct. And it's on plaintiff's. Did you, did you hear that, Mr. Connolly? I did, yes. And that was the sort of condition Mr. Depp was in when you saw him at the house, correct? Uh, yes, yes. Mr. Depp was upset and angry when you saw him at the house, correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Now, did you take, did you take Mr. Depp to the ho hospital? Along with others, yes. Is it, is it your testimony that Mr. Depp was coherent at the hospital? Yes. Um, can you, let's show um, defendants exhibit 370. And I'd just like you to look at something for a moment. It's, I'm not, I'm not putting it in, I'm not publishing it. I just want to show them a document. Defendants exhibit 370. Your Honor, I'm gonna object on foundation grounds. The witness is not even copied on this document. I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to ask him a question and ask him if it, if it refreshes his recollection. That's all I was going to ask him about. I can, I can use any it's, document to refresh. Wait, you want to approach for a second to see what
You can take it down. Right there. Let's switch back in. You can take it down. Was um, Mr. Depp's finger was filled with dirt, grime, and paint when you saw it? Yes. And now you say you saw no bruises or cuts on on Amber on March 8, 2015, correct? Correct. Isn't it true that your main concern was Mr. Depp and getting him out of the house, correct? correct. You were, so correct. you weren't you weren't concentrating on Amber, correct? I was close enough. If there was any marks on Amber's face, I would have picked that up in two minutes. As you're trying to change the home office. As you're trying to pull, as you're trying to pull, as you're trying to pull Mr. Depp out of the house, you're you're scanning Amber for bruises and cuts. Not scanning, no. but I'm looking at it. As you're moving, as you're moving Mr. Depp out of the house, correct? Yes. Right. Yes. How do I know what she's going to lift? Right. As, as I, I'm watching her. When I move, when I move a client from a bar situation, a house situation, I watch what's happening around me. But you're not. I know where the client is. The client's with me. Right, the client was with you, and you're not scanning. You didn't scan Miss Hurd's body for. I scan everything. You I scanned everything, everything on her body. Not everything on her body. Not She's everything. wearing long sleeves, from what I recall. Okay. Um, and at the hospital, the doctor was told that Mr. Depp cut his finger with a knife. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you understand that the damage at the house, Mr. Depp, at Mr. Depp's rented house, amounted to about a hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Objection Where calls for speculation. Okay. I'll allow it. That's fine. Next question. In Hicksville, other than when you first arrived, you didn't go to the trailer that Mr. Depp and Amber were staying in. Is that right? Only when I delivered them to it. Right. And then after you delivered them to that, the... When, it, when I delivered them to it, when we first got there. Right. We went inside and had a look around, yeah? But after that, you never went inside the trailer after that, correct? Correct. So you have no idea what went on in the trailer between Mr. Depp and Amber, isn't that right? I was told. But you, but you have no idea. You don't have any personal knowledge as to what happened. I never happened. seen it. Right. No, I never seen it. No. And you know, you have no idea how much damage was done to the trailer, correct? Personal knowledge. I do have an idea. You have no idea what happened to Amber in the trailer, isn't that right? That's correct. And you don't. And and you talked about that there was tension between Amber and Mr. Depp. You don't know what started the fight, correct? Correct. Did you see Mr. Depp grab another woman's arm before they moved off to the truck, before the fight started? No. Okay. Were you with Mr. Were you with the company when you were, the, were you with the group? No. Okay. I was, I was maybe 20 feet away observing. That's my job, not to get involved. I don't sit with uh, my clients in a personal situation. I've just observed. Now, <clears throat> You testified that at times you saw marks and bruises on Mr. Depp, a fat lip, I think you said. Um, you don't have dates for those times that you saw that, right? I don't recall, no. You're okay. talking, that's a long time ago, you know. It's... Right. And, and you, testified in, you testified in the UK in this, you testified in the UK, correct? Correct. And you gave a witness statement too in the UK, correct? Correct. And and you never testified to seeing any marks, bruises, or injuries on Mr. Depp. Isn't that right in the UK? I wasn't asked in the UK. But you never testified. You never testified to that, right? I wasn't asked. Okay. Now, you in the private. You talked about a private plane that you saw a plastic lighter bounce off of Mr. Depp's chest. Correct. Correct. And you said you saw Mr. Mr. Depp smirking and said, and then he said, was that it? Is that right? No. Okay. You didn't, you don't know what started the fight there, correct? Correct. Okay. And you talked about at the Easter, at the, EB, at the uh, lofts, I think you called it in Los Angeles, you saw a Coke can get thrown somewhere in the vicinity of Mr. Depp, correct? I've seen a can. Right. Not a Coke can. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what can it was. Okay. And you don't know what happened before you saw the Coke can get thrown, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and you, talk, you, you talked about this picture of, um, that you took in, in Southeast Asia, correct? Correct. Okay. And you never mentioned in the 
UK matter or in your witness statement, Mr. Depp having scratches and bruises on the train, correct? I was never prompted, I was never asked. You gave a witness statement that gave the, the what you saw and the relationship between Amber and Mr. Depp and you never talked about bruises or cuts on Mr. De on Mr. Depp in Southeast Asia, correct? No, I wasn't asked that. Okay. Um, now, you said oh, only Johnny could make requests for a private dining car, isn't that right? I said that. Could, uh, only Johnny needed a private dining car. Miss Heard didn't need a private dining car, correct? That would be correct. Oh, yeah, that would definitely be correct. Yeah, okay. only, only Johnny Depp would need a private dining car, but Johnny doesn't want a private dining car. Okay. Now, you were not present in Miss Heard and Miss Heard and Mr. Depp's cabin on the train, right? No. And if a fight That's occurred, correct. Correct. and if a fight occurred in the cabin, you'd have no way of knowing about it, right? I wouldn't know. And you don't know if Mr. Depp was strangling Miss Heard, do you? No, I wouldn't know. You don't know if Mr. Depp had his shirt wrapped around Amber's neck, do you? Uh, objection, speculation, communal of. Oh, no, I wouldn't know. The only, uh, know I would, the only reason I would know anything in that cabin. No, uh, okay, you, you wouldn't know. You, an, you answered. You, sir, sir, right. sir, you answered that. All right. Uh, we can move on. Okay. And um, if we could put up, please, um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 120. And this is at 190, and I believe 120 has been in evidence before. Well, I have 120A, 120B, and 120C. So I think this would be 120B, if it. 120D? Yeah. Okay. D. And I would, Mr. Connolly, I'm, I'm asking you questions about the fourth um, one down. Do you see that? Yeah, it's not very really uh, clear. Uh, though. I can't, it's, I'm going to it's tiny. A, a, objection. Um, the document is is hearsay. I, right. I don't know what the exception would be. Okay, I'll hold. If you want to come forward, let's. <laughs> Mr. Connolly, um, you agree that Ms. Hurd's been nothing but respectful and professional to you, correct? Absolutely. Right. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further. All right. Redirect. Uh, Mr. Mr. Connolly, very briefly, uh, when you were in Ms. Hurd's presence in the house in Australia uh, on the day that Mr. Depp uh, lost his fingertip, how far away were you from Miss Heard? Uh, 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 on the exit, on the, the the egress, about three feet, four feet at the most. Can you estimate for us about how long you were in Miss Heard's presence? 
Oh, you know what? Best way to do this is think about it and count it out, okay? Fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. How was the light? Well, it's Australia. The door is uh, massive. It's, it's a wall of glass behind them. The light is absolutely fine. You couldn't get better. All right, I have nothing further. All right, is this a witness subject to recall? Uh, I think I think so, yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Connolly, since you're subject to recall, did not discuss your testimony with anybody and don't watch anything about this case, okay? But you're free to log off today. Of course, Your Honor, yeah. All right, you're free to log off today, though, Thank sir. You. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, your next witness. Mr. Jenkins, yeah. Mr. Jenkins, can you hear me, sir? Afternoon. Yes, I can, Your Honor. All right, perfect. Thank you, sir. All right. If you raise your right hand for me, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of law? I do. All right, thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Jenkins. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Could you please state your full name for the record? Starling Jenkins III. And Mr. Jenkins, where do you live? Los Angeles, California. And what is your occupation? Executive chauffeur security. And how long have you worked as an executive chauffeur and in security? Executive chauffeur for 30 years, security for eight years. And, and what occupations did you hold prior to working as an executive chauffeur and, and in security? Route sales executive and United States Marine. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes, I do. And when did you first meet Mr. Depp? 1993. How did you first meet Mr. Depp? He used delivery service to transport him to and from. So in the, in the 30 or so years that you've known Mr. Depp, uh, what services have you performed for him uh, over the course of that period? Child care, animal care, personal assistance duties, security, and transportation. And, and could you uh, estimate approximately how many hours per week uh, would you provide those services to Mr. Depp? 40 to 60 hours. And can you describe generally your interactions with Mr. Depp in the time that you've worked for him? Pleasant, always upbeat. Do you know the defendant in this case, Amber Heard? Yes. And when did you first meet Ms. Heard? After the filming of the Rum Diary project. And can you describe generally your interactions with Ms. Heard? Pleasant, cordial. Very respectful. And so in your time working with Mr. Depp, did you uh, ever observe Mr. Depp's and Ms. Hurd's interactions with one another? Yes. And can you describe those interactions generally, please? Very cordial, very uh, aware that people are around them, very, very friendly. Did you ever see them argue? Yes. Can you describe uh, what you observed about those arguments? It would be initiated by her. She would try to engage with him. He would tell me to turn the music up. And so um, where did these arguments take place? In the car. Do you recall how many times you witnessed them argue? Twice. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, turning your attention to April 21st, 2016, uh, can you tell the jury what you recall about that day? Could you repeat the question, sir? Sure. And so turning your attention to April 21st, 2016, can you tell the jury what you recall about that day? It was the birthday party being held at the penthouse. And when you say the penthouse, what are you referring to? It's the Eastern Columbia building. And what were you doing that evening? That evening, I was assigned security on the detail. 
were you inside the residence uh, while the birthday party was taking place? I was in the CP, the command post that's stationed on the same floor, right outside of the elevator. So. And, and did you interact with Ms. Hurd at all that evening? Yes, I did. Can in you regards to getting her clients uh, keys, parking, making sure no one else was on the floor that wasn't invited to the party. Were there any issues at the birthday party uh, at the time uh, that you were present at the penthouses? No issues except for the boss did not show up. And do you recall what time you left that day? 11.15 p.m. that evening. And Mr. Jenkins, what happened the next day, April 22nd, 2016? I arrived early, 10.45 went upstairs to the penthouse. I was informed by Amber that she got in a fight with Johnny last night. She threw his personal property over the balcony into the streets, 9th and Broadway. And when you say personal property, what are you referring to? His phone, wallet, credit cards, passports, everything that's in his wallet. Did uh, Ms. Hurd say anything else to you about this uh, altercation? Nothing except she, they were fighting. So what, what did you do after Ms. Hurd informed you that she had thrown Mr. Depp's personal property off the balcony? Formulated a plan with Norm from the office to use the Find My Phone app, hit the streets and try to get lucky. Did you end up finding Mr. Depp's phone? Yes, I did. In Skid Row probably six miles from the house. And who had the, who had the phone? A homeless gentleman, unhoused gentleman. I approached him about the phone. He was honest, he returned it. I gave him a reward for it. And what was the reward? $420, chicken tacos, chips, apples, Fiji water. After finding Mr. Depp's phone, what did you do? I returned to the penthouse, showed the phone to Amber that I retrieved it. I left it in the, C in the CP for the evening security to return it to Mr. Depp. So after figuring out uh, things with the phone, what, what happened next? What happened next is I walked Amber to the car. We got everybody in the car. She's on her way to Coachella. I went back to the penthouse to retrieve the dogs and the luggage. Were you also going to Coachella with Ms. Hurd? Yes, I was. I was the transportation for Amber and her friends while she was at Coachella. So how did you get to Coachella? I drove the SUV provided by Johnny, put the animals and all the luggage in and headed out to the venue. And the, the, the morning of April 22nd, did you see uh, any injuries on Ms. Hurd? No marks, no injuries. Um, and so uh, driving out to Coachella, did anyone drive with you? I was in the car alone except for the animals. And how did Ms. Hurd get to Coachella? She drove her Mustang. Was anyone else in her car? She was with, I believe, her sister and one other friend, her assistant, Savannah. And do you know how many days uh, Ms. Hurd and her friends were planning to stay at Coachella? So the following Monday, I believe it's the 25th of April, we departed. And do you recall where Ms. Hurd was staying at Coachella? We were staying at the Parker Boutique Hotels there in Palm Springs outside of Coachella. Were you also staying at the Parker Hotel? I also stayed there. And so did you attend Coachella for work or for pleasure? For work. And what was your job that weekend? Provide security and transportation, animal care, Amber's rolling assistant, take care of her, whatever she needed while she was there at the Parker or in the uh, out travel. Do you recall what time approximately you arrived at the Parker Hotel on April 22nd? Around 5.30ish, maybe quarter to six. And, and what did Ms. Hurd and her friends do that evening, April 22nd? 
that evening we arrived we were assigned the rooms we went with the with the uh, staff of the parker hotel around to the suites where we were staying they let us in we let all the luggage in and uh, we proceeded to uh, plan for that evening to depart by 7 Seven fifteen is to get to the festival day. And and how did Miss Hurd and her friends get from the hotel to the festival that evening? I drove them directly to there. And did you have any discussions with Miss Hurd on the way to Coachella that evening? We had a conversation pertaining to the surprise she left in the boss's bed prior to leaving the apartment. And when you refer to the surprise in the boss's bed, what are you referring to? The defecation. And what did Miss Hurd say about the defecation in Mr. Depp's bed? A horrible practical jerk gone wrong. Mr. Jenkins, what observations did you make about Miss Hurd at Coachella in April 2016? She had no worries. She was there to whoop it up. It's her birthday. She's with her friends. And how often were you with her that weekend? was with her every day. She went to the venue from the time that we interacted with the wallet incident, the night before at the party, all the way until Monday, we returned with the pets and the luggage. And did you uh, observe anything about Miss Hurd's health that weekend? She got sick. Do you know she what- She got sick at the venue at the night. Do you know what caused Miss Hurd to be sick? She was eating the magic mushrooms and drinking red wine on an empty stomach. And uh, how do you know that she drank red wine and took magic mushrooms? I saw the room service and I went to their room to collect them, to take them out that evening. So is that something, in the car. excuse me, is that something you witnessed? I witnessed it. And what did you do uh, in response to Miss Hurd being sick at Coachella? I collected her, got her in the vehicle. She didn't want anyone else to know that she was sick. Take her back to the parker alone. I took her to the 7-Eleven where I retrieved hydrating fluids, Advil, and let her have those. Got her back to the parker, got her into the suite, and then went back to pick up everyone else. And, and Mr. Jenkins, when you said uh, Ms. Hurd got sick, do you recall what her symptoms were? Yeah, she was throwing up. Mr. Jenkins, did you see any injuries of any kind on Ms. Hurd, April 22nd, 2016? No injuries. I sustained, so yes. What about the rest of that weekend, Mr. Jenkins? Any injuries that you saw? No injuries. Um, have you ever witnessed any physical abuse between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? No. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Nothing further. All right, cross-examination. Good afternoon, Mr. Jenkins. Good afternoon. So just, just to be clear on the chronology, um, you met Mr. Depp in 1993, is that right? Correct. And you've worked for him ever since? Off and on, yes. Okay. And your, your salary is paid by Mr. Depp, correct? Salary, no. You receive pay for the work that you do for Mr. Yes. Depp, correct? Of course, yes, of course. And what Mr. Depp's security is your highest priority in your job, correct? Yes, it is. You're loyal to Mr. It is Depp. And his family. And his family. You're loyal to Mr. Depp, right? Yes. Now, I want to turn to the, the, the night of April 21st, 2016. You, just, just to recap, you said you were working a security shift at Amber's birthday at the Eastern Columbia building that evening, correct? Correct. And you said that your shift ended around 11.15, correct? Correct. And you, you said the boss still hadn't shown up by the time that you left the Eastern Columbia building, right? Correct. So you have no idea where Mr. Depp was or what he was doing from 9.30 p.m. that evening until 
at least 1115 when you left the Eastern Columbia building, right? No, I do know what he's doing. He was attending to his mother. Hey, you weren't with him. I had information. Okay. All right. That's information that you that you received, but you you have no personal knowledge of that. I have no reason. I have no reason to doubt it. It came from Sean. Okay. No oh, that is, oh, okay. So, Mister Mister Bet told you that the boss's outlet. Right, Mister Bet told you that he was tending to his mother that night. He didn't say mother. He said the boss was outlet. I'm aware of what the situation was, the time frame. He's with his mother. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. Um. And did you have any understanding that he had a meeting with his new business manager earlier that evening where he was told that he was running out of money and that his taxes hadn't been paid in years? Did you have any understanding of that? Objection. Or anyone else? Objection. Foundation calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. And you didn't see Mr. Depp that night, right? No, I did not. So you came back the next morning to escort Amber to Coachella, right? Yes. And you say that Amber told you that she had thrown Mr. Depp's phone off the roof? Correct. And did you come to understand that um, Mr. Depp had thrown her phone off the roof that evening prior to when Amber threw Mr. Depp's phone off the roof? She informed me of that. Okay, she informed you of that. So when you went outside to look for Mr. Depp's phone, you, you weren't looking for Ms. Hurd's phone, were you? She had her phone. She had her phone. She was trying to re-download and back it up. Okay. So she, you were only looking for Mr. Depp's phone when you went when you went downstairs to the to the to uh, to try to you found it with a with an unhoused person. You said correct. Correct. Okay. And you did you did I hear you right that you said it was six miles away where you found the phone? Correct. It, it actually wasn't six miles away. It was it was actually right below the building. The ECB building, no, it was correct? Not. Okay, let's. No, it was not. Can you pull up? Um, does he have a way to see documents that just just him, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. Um, could you please pull up uh, the witness statement, Mr. Jenkins? Mr. Jenkins, do you do you remember giving testimony on Mr. Depp's behalf in the UK trial? Yes, I did. And um, you gave you gave a witness statement first in in writing, correct? Do you remember that? Yes. And then you were examined um, by the attorneys in the trial, correct? Correct. Okay. Can you see on your screen the statement uh, that's, do, do you see a witness statement? Yes, I see it. It says witness statement of Starling Jenkins, right? Correct. And this is the statement that you wrote and signed as part of the, uh, the UK trial on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. If you can scroll, please, to page three of the document. And Mr. Jenkins, I'm going to read you what you wrote in paragraph 13. Um, okay. And we can go from there. Um, on paragraph okay. 13, you wrote in your witness statement in the UK trial, the Find my iPhone application indicated that Johnny's phone was somewhere on the streets below the balcony of the residence. Did I read that right? Uh, if that's what it says, that's what it says. I'm telling you the phone was in Skid Row. Okay, so. the photo of the gentleman that found it. I have the location where the phone was found. Isn't Skid Row just a few blocks away from the, the Eastern Columbia building? No, it's uh, it's on Sixth and Main, I guess, depending on what area you are. Okay, so so one of these two sworn statements, either what you just said in court just now that it was found six miles away, or this, one of these is false. Correct? Uh, it's, it's just inadequate as far as the location. The location is not below the the penthouse. It's not on Broadway. It okay. was found on Broadway by the unhoused man, and then he lives off of Skid Row. Okay. Now let's move on to Coachella, please. You yes. you were with uh, Amber and her friends that weekend at Coachella, um, and, and yes. you testified a little bit about what you saw. 
Is it fair to say that Amber and her friends were having a good time that weekend? Yes, they were. And there were thousands of other people at that music festival too, correct? Correct. Okay. To your, to, were you aware that Amber's sister Whitney was pregnant and sober that weekend? Wasn't my information, wasn't my knowledge. Were you aware that Amber's sister Whitney threw up in a parking lot that weekend? No. Okay. To your knowledge and understanding, Mr. Jenkins, um, there's nothing wrong with wanting to spend time with your friends at a music festival after being abused by your husband, right? What abuse? That's not an abnormal thing to want to be around your friends, correct? She was partying it up with her friends. She okay. was partying it up. And you said you didn't hear anything about, she didn't say anything to you about domestic violence having taken place, correct? Nothing in the car pertaining to that. Would it surprise you that she might not want to talk to someone who had worked for her husband for around 23 years at that point about domestic violence? Would that surprise you? Objection, speculation, Your Honor. Sustain the objection. Next question. Ms. Heard texted you on May 12th. Uh, 2016 asking you to call her correct correct and you did not bother to respond to that text correct correct and that was the last communication that you had with her correct correct now you weren't um, just to be clear you weren't at Amber's house on Orange Avenue in March 2013 when Johnny was there correct I might have driven him to the location. I'm familiar with the address. But you didn't enter the house at any point in March 2013, correct? Depending on if he had luggage or gifts going upstairs, I might have. You, but you didn't hang out with him inside the house, right? Hurry up and wait in the car, sir. And you weren't at the Hicksville Trailer Palace in late May or early June 2013, right? No. You weren't on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles in May 2014, correct? With with Johnny and Amber, you weren't in the you weren't with Mr. Depp and Amber in the Bahamas in August 2014, correct? Correct. You weren't with Mr. Depp and Amber in Tokyo in January 2015, correct? Uh, no, I was not there. Correct. You weren't with Mr. Depp and Amber in Australia in March 2015, correct? Correct. You weren't at Thanksgiving with them in Penthouse 5 of the Eastern Columbia Building in November 2015, correct? Uh, I believe I was there. You didn't. I might you have been assigned to detail. I don't have the schedule, but I might have been assigned to detail that day. Thanksgiving is a holiday. Sure, sure. You don't have any specific recollection of that one way or the other, though, correct? I would probably say I was on duty that day. Okay. It's the holiday. Okay. Um, you weren't celebrating Thanksgiving in Penthouse 5 with them that evening, correct? I was in the CP. Okay. And that's that's a separate room, correct? Separate room on the same level, correct. And you weren't in the Bahamas in late December 2015, correct? With them? Correct. You weren't in the ECB with just the two of them the night of December 15th, 2015, correct? That is... Uh right before the Christmas party, I believe. Correct. And finally, you weren't in the penthouse of the Eastern Columbia building on the night of May 21st, 2016 with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, correct? Correct. And, and, and you'd agree that you have no personal knowledge of what went on between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard behind closed doors, correct? Correct. Nothing further, thank you. All right, redirect. Very quickly, Your Honor. Do we have um, Mr. Jenkins' witness statement? Or perhaps. And if we could go to the third page, please. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, directing your attention to paragraph 13, which Mr. Rottenborn had you look at just uh, a second ago. Um, yes. He read the first sentence of that uh, witness statement. Um, 
the find my phone, the find my iPhone application indicated that Johnny's phone was somewhere on the streets below the balcony of the residence. Walked out. Could you could you please read for the jury the the second part of the that paragraph? I walked out onto the street, did not see the phone. I then asked several homeless people if they had the phone. One homeless man admitted to me that he had the phone, returned the phone to me in exchange for the following. 425 in cash, three chicken tacos, two bags of chips, four apples, two apples, four bottles of water. And so do you, do you recall where you found the iPhone that day? Yes, I do. Objection asked and answered. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Mr. Jenkins, moving to uh, Coachella, um, Mr. Rottenborn asked you about um, Whitney Heard. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do. Do you know the difference between Whitney Heard and Amber Heard? Yes, I do. And who was sick that One day? One is the boss's wife. One is the boss's sister-in-law. Who was sick that day at Coachella? Amber was sick. Thank you. Nothing further. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Jenkins, you're, um, you're free from testimony, and therefore you're free to, to do whatever you need to do, or you can watch the proceedings. It's up to you. But uh, you're, you're done for today, though. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you to the court. All right. Have a good day. You also. All right. All right, I think it's close enough to 5.30 that I think we've had enough of a week. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, be done with the testimony for this week. Although, since I won't see you until Monday, I want to give you the long jury instruction that I give you every, uh, every Thursday evening, just so we all remember our responsibilities, okay? So at this time, remember that you are not to read anything about this case. You are not to watch anything about this case. You are not to listen to anything about this case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, the internet, and any online sites. Uh, further, you are not to read, watch, or listen to anything about this case on any social networking sites, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, blogs, or similar sites. In addition, you must not communicate with anyone about the case, whether in person, over the phone, by email, text, or instant messaging, or by any other electronic or non-electronic means. This includes your friends, family, coworkers, acquaintances, and strangers. I also instruct you that you cannot do any research or make inquiries about this case, whether online or by any other means. For example, you cannot look, uh, look information up on the Internet that is related to this case or related to the persons involved in this case, nor may you consult dictionaries or other reference materials. What you learn about this case is limited to what you learn in the four walls of this courtroom when proceedings are underway. You also may not communicate about this case or the persons involved in this case with your fellow jurors, okay? Hope you have a good weekend. It's supposed to be great weather on Saturday. Go outside, get some fresh air, okay? And just enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you back Monday at 10, okay? Thank you so much. All right. And as always, Mr. Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, please do not do any uh, posting on social media and do not talk to the press. I appreciate it. And have a good weekend uh, for the attorneys tomorrow. Um, what time? How many? Did we do our homework this week? Yes. We did. We did. Work in progress. Okay. So are we still doing 19 tomorrow? Twenty. You added one for me. That's lovely. Okay, great. So we'll do 20 tomorrow, so I would suggest 8 o'clock. Can everybody be here at 8? Sound good? Okay, we'll be here at 8 a.m., and we'll just do them until we're done. So bring a lot of meals, okay? All right, we'll see you tomorrow then. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks,